Summer in Ogasawara was about to reach its climax. Emily Shirase was about to embark on her greatest adventure yet. Looks like she's just about ready. She does? Eee. But it's still too tight in the chest. I think it's kind of supposed to be tight, right? Oh, is that so? Think you'll be okay that deep? If you get scared, uh, just let the instructor know. Me, uh, scared of the sea? Emily laughed proudly, I presume. Yes, and shook her hair. I'm Emily Shirase, blessed daughter of the sea, just like my kanji says. Looking at her, you would think that she really was the daughter of some oceanic deity. Emily put on her underwater mask. Be back in a sec. Good luck, Emily. Be sure to listen to your instructor. Don't rush it, and don't mess around. <laughs> Emily gave us a thumbs up before she leapt into the ocean. She was undergoing training to get her diver certification. That way she would be able to recover her treasure from the ghost ship. She was still afraid of the sea, but she wanted to recover her parents' lost engagement ring. That need was stronger than her fear. The day after the typhoon, we eventually made it back to Chichijima, but Emily didn't take the ferry back home. There's something I need to do here, and I can't come home until it's done. I know I'm being selfish, but please, let me do this, Papa. Really? Yes, thank you. Papa, I, I love you. Emily breathed a sigh of relief and smiled brightly as she hung up the phone. She had used the cafe's telephone to call home. She wanted to apologize for running away and let her father know that she was okay. What did he say? He said I could stay for a while longer. That's great! Awesome! It appears the entertainment will continue. <laughs> I'm glad he let you stay, Emily. Even if I, if he'd say no, said if it, even if he'd said no, I was going to stay anyway. I mean, we found the ghost ship. There's no way I could go back now. Life is an adventure, right? You sure do talk a lot for someone with no money. No money? Well, why not work here? My legs are getting so bad, I've been thinking of hiring some help. <gasps> Thank you, Grandma. But I've been here. J just ask me, Grandma. Why don't you just take yourself home, you waste of space? <sighs> Old Biddy. Snot nosed brat. <sighs> Whatever. But, uh, Grandma. Why are you being so kind to me? I'm a complete stranger. And we looked anxious as she asked, but Grandma just laughed. When I look at you, I can't help but remember all of those years ago. You look just like I did when I was young. What? There's no way you look like Emily. It's just rude. You're the one being rude, you runt. I wasn't always this wrinkly. Grandma waved her cane angrily. Okay, Miss Wichiko, uh, calm down, okay? Now. And that's how Emily started working at our shop for the rest of her stay in Chichijimai. <gasps> nice going! Now you can use the money from work to pay for your training. Yeah, but I won't have enough money for a while. You needn't concern yourself. Huh? They were going to let Emily pay for the training later. Miss Pacheco said so, and I'm not one to go against her. That was the scuba shop's owner, Chisa's father. Grandma was well known on the island, and thanks to her influence, they would let Emily pay for her training later. 
and so today marked the second day of her diver certification training. It was time for her to take the final test. She had to leave her instructor, swim out to a designated spot, and return on her own. If she could do that, she would pass. You can do it, Emily. Good luck! <laughs> Chisa and I watched from the boat the shop had prepared for the training. Uh, Finn the dolphin was alongside us watching as well. Emily couldn't actually swim, but with scuba gear, that wasn't a big problem. With the mask and fins and a cylinder on your back, diving was nothing like regular swimming. Emily went out and touched the designated large rock. Then she turned back and came back. She returned to the instructor with no trouble, and the instructor formed a large circle with his hands. Woohoo! Alright! Welcome back to Machiko's Cafe. Uh, table for one? Right this way, please. Okay, uh, they want a seasonal fish platter with coffee after dinner. Got it? Emily was a great waitress. She'd only been working for a few days, but she had already become the cafe's poster girl. She's a quick learner. I definitely thought she'd be terrible at dealing with customers. Uh, she's just happy to be working. Do you know how jealous she was of your job collecting mail from the seafloor mailbox? When Emily first arrived, and as Chisa pointed out, she was completely reliant on other people. But we were still just kids after all, so being dependent was only natural. However, over the last few days, Emily really seemed to grow up. And of course, we couldn't forget the other poster girl. Order up! Yep, on my way! Chisa, don't you already have like enough jobs? <laughs> Chisa had started working right alongside Emily. She was popular on her own, right? Particularly with the tourists. <gasps> Look, it's a dolphin girl! Welcome to Pachico's Cafe. I'm sorry for Finn's behavior the other day. Don't worry about it, that shot's got me a lot of likes later. As Chisa was already an island celebrity, after they heard she was working here, quite a few came by just to see her. Who knew success could be so hard? It's a bit much for these old bones. You need some help in the kitchen? I wasn't talking to you. I went over to help out anyway. There was no way she could keep up with this crowd. Uh, seafood, yaki, soba, ready. <gasps> Got it! Hey guys! <gasps> Welcome, Rieto! Hey, Jisa, so you're actually working here, huh? But where's Emily? Emily, you've got a customer! Uh, yes? Hey, I heard the news. You did it. <laughs> Wanna see? Uh, I guess I could show you. And here we go. Ta-da! Emily whipped out the C card hidden in her apron pocket and held it up close to Ryota's face. Whoa, C card. You really did it. Of course I did. A C card is used to prove scuba certification. With that card, you can go diving anywhere in the world, not only in Japan. And of course, now she would be able to rent equipment unlike last time. In fact, the card Emily was showing off was just a temp. The real one wouldn't be ready for a few more days. Right on, congrats! <laughs> the sea is my playground now. It is my namesake after all. Emily, blessed daughter of the sea. It's no small coincidence that my parents chose those uh, kanji for me. Uh, uh, and there she goes again. Never seen someone so big-headed with a beginner's card. There are multiple levels to diamond certification, and Emily had only passed the lowest, which had restrictions on things like dive depth. For higher levels, you needed many more hours of experience. Grandma, look at my C card! How nice, Emily. I knew you could do it if you just applied yourself. 
I was always up to no good when I was young, and that's when I met him. It was a beautiful starry night. Oh, a customer! Oh, welcome to Pachiko's Cafe! She's really good at avoiding Mr. Pachiko's stories. I don't think she's doing it on purpose, but her timing is always spot on. Grandma was pretty old, so she could really ramble. And I didn't know if she was Cena or what, but she kept telling me the same ones. And we were all sick of hearing them. So anyway, Chisa. Huh? Uh, what are you doing working here anyway? Oh, well, you know, I just I want to save up for the future. The future. You know, oh, w welcome to Machiko's Cafe. Uh, please have a seat. As Chisa went to help some customers, I realized that I was being avoided. What's with her? All these young ladies and their plans. It was morning. As usual, I woke up early to clean the shop, then put together a quick breakfast in the kitchen. Cause yeah, look with Chisa, so she's got... I presume she probably helps out at this fa her family shop. She's got that mail delivery job thing. She's did like a TV special or something like that. And now uh, with the cafe, this is four known jobs that Chisa has. Industrious that girl. As usual, I woke up early to clean the shop, then put together a quick breakfast in the kitchen. We were headed out today. Are you ready? Yep, all set. Oh crap, I totally forgot. Uh, Grandma asked me to run an errand. I'll be right back, uh, so just wait here. Do not go without me, okay? I'll be so mad. You know I wouldn't. Emily ran off to a neighbor's house to do her errands. Oh boy. Well, looks like I've got some time. Uh, guess I'll prepare some lunch. But just as I went into the kitchen, someone showed up. Oh. Who's this? Okay. A male tourist. Mm -hmm. An older tourist, probably thinking we were serving breakfast, came in and sat down without a word. I wonder if this is Emily's father. Possible. Uh, I'm sorry, but we're not open yet. What? Oh, oh, sorry about that. I could do something simple like bacon, eggs, and toast with some coffee if you'd like. Oh, that would be great. I still had some ingredients left over from breakfast, so I got to work. The scent of fried bacon floated through the shop. Oh, I'll let you know, me. How are you? Huh? D did you need something, little girl? Oh, uh, don't mind me. Shami had appeared from nowhere. After staring sightly at the customer, she sat at the counter and whispered over to me. Hera, that uh, suspicious man has appeared. He's just a customer, don't be rude. With that demeanor, he could be a foreign spy. He cert he's certainly not of the Hoi Polio. Cut it out, he could hear you. Hmm. How do you like your eggs? Over easy or fried? Uh, fried, please. Runny eggs are a bit harder to eat. You got it. I carried the simple breakfast to his table. Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you. Please don't mind the girl. She's a bit strange, but she doesn't mean anything by it. No, it's my fault. Barging in when you're closed. Are you on vacation? Something like that. His answer seemed a bit vague. Suspicious indeed. I mouthed shut up at Chinami. This island really is a cafe, I guess. It is, uh, not much point in rushing anything. There wasn't much to feel rushed about, honestly. The shops were only stocked on cargo day, and though the tiny island had no trains, it was easy to meet up with people. On a night like this, living between the sea and mountains, laid back was the only way to be. Not much, po not much point in hurrying, huh? Oh, that's good. He sighed after a sip of coffee. Thank you. One of my side businesses is, is a cafe, but I have to admit, this is great coffee. Where are your beans from? 
Oh, guess what? Huh? We use beans grown here on the Ogaswara Islands. Oh, Ogaswara coffee. Local coffee made with beans cultivated on the Ogaswara Islands. A very rare coffee with only about 200 kilograms harvested a year due to damage from typhoons. Not many people know it, but there are coffee beans grown in Japan. Only in tiny parts of Okinawa and Ogaswara, though. Machiko's Cafe uses Ogasawara beans. You don't say. The man took another sip and savored the scent and flavor of the beans. Next, he set the still hot bacon and eggs on his toast and started his breakfast proper. With a couple of wistful signs, he finished off his meal, clearly enjoying it. Morning! Oh, a uh, customer. Uh, did you want to eat anything? Our date. Okay, uh, so just, uh, Cafe Alouettes, right? I worked on Jesus Coffee. Thank you for the food. Uh, what do I owe you? That'll be 500 yen. A bargain? Isn't that normal for breakfast? You're right. That's what I charged my shop, too. So then put a 500 yen coin on the table. Thanks again. It was delicious. Uh, come back anytime. Who was that? No idea. Probably a tourist. He's a foreign spy. I have seen his like in anime, and they typically wear such shirts. Are you serious? Don't encourage her. Just then, Emily came running in. I made it. Good morning, uh, what are you all worn out for? I didn't want to be left behind. I told you not to worry. Haroki, are you all going out treasure hunting again? We are. Lucky. Do you want to come? I am not an outdoor type. I melt and die within 30 minutes of direct sunlight. Come on, and play outside a little! It's summer, and I swear, you're the pastiest person on this island! Ah, how simple you are, dear sister! In this age of technology, going outside to play goes against the very flow of social progress. Shaking her head in disbelief, Janami helped herself to some orange juice from the cafe's fridge. Well, why don't we go hang out at Umura Beach next time? Hiroki, you certainly do have a way with the ladies. Well, I guess that doesn't sound too bad. No, I don't have a way with anyone. <laughs> Alright? So it's subconscious? Huh, really, could have fooled me. The ladies were ganging up on me. I learned from much practice that pushing it would only result in regret. Anyway, it's time to head out, so did you want to put those bags away, Emily? Oh, uh, right. Emily went to drop off Grandma's stuff. You hurry up too, Chisa. Yep. Today we were going diving. Now that Emily had her diver certification, it was time for action. I always want to pronounce certification like, like certificates, but that's a slightly different emphasis than certification. Anyways. It was time to explore the ghost ship. We beached the outrigger canoe on Minimajama and unloaded our equipment. It's a perfect day for diving, isn't it? Jesus said, staring out over the gentle waves and the cloudless sky. Explain that! Okay, let's get changed. She's a strip without a cetacean, as always. She's wearing a swimsuit underneath. One and two and three. While Chisa warmed up, Emily started changing next to her. Um, Hera, could you maybe turn away? Oh, yeah, sorry. She was clearly wearing a swimsuit underneath her clothes like Chisa, but I assumed she didn't want me to see her undressing. Fair enough. Looking the other way, I stripped too. Once finished, I turned back around. Emily was there in her swimsuit. 
and we stood there fidgeting and acting bored. And I couldn't help checking her out. What are you doing? Uh, come on, get warmed up. Uh, Jesus insisted Emily started her warm-up as well. One, uh, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, come on, Cam. Come on, come on. Let's, let's get focused here, Cam. <laughs> okay, maybe we're focused, whatever. Anyways. Five, six, seven, eight. She had a rich tan, and her body was fit and healthy. She didn't seem to be on a diet, but she had no fat, and her muscles bunched slightly as she flexed. On the other hand, Emily's skin was as white as fresh fallen snow. The way the swimsuit hugged against her supple skin made her look even more soft and luscious. The contrast was exquisite. Okay, there we go. Yes, see, this is a nice view. Th this. It's nice, picturesque. Vista of the rocks, and the water, the cove. It's, it's nice. Wow, what nice view. As I watched the two girls warming up, Finn stared at me with an unreadable expression. Stop staring at you. Get warmed up too. Oh, yeah. I rushed to join in the exercise. When we were finished, it was time to put on our wetsuits. If you weren't used to it, putting one on could be hard. They're made of an elastic material and fit tightly on the body. Uh, uh, for the upper body, it's easier if you put one arm through first and try the other arm. Although I was playing teacher, it had actually been a while since I had gone scuba diving. After we had our wetsuits on, it was time to put on the hardware. There's a lot of equipment involved in scuba. First, there's the diving cylinder. It should go without saying, but that's where the air comes from. And it's incredibly heavy. Next, there's the regulator to supply the diver with air from the tank. Since the air in the tank is pressurized, it needs to be regulated to match the water pressure for breathing. Then there's the wet vest like BCD or buoyancy compensator device, presumably. This helps control buoyancy while underwater, but it can also be used as a life vest on the surface. Weights placed on a waist belt help offset the diving suit's natural buoyancy, allowing you to stay underwater. Fins are sometimes worn like boots or strapped directly to your bare feet. A diving mask to cover the nose and a snorkel. Finally, there are smaller items like pressure gauge, depth gauge, and compass. So heavy! Emily, fully dressed now, was staggering. Come on, I'm sure you had to wear this for your certification. Scuba equipment was really heavy, so a weaker girl like Emily would have a hard time just walking. Ready? Okay, buddy check time! Since Chisa was free diving after the warm up, she'd been helping us get dressed. She was also our guide. You know about the buddy system, right? Yeah, we practiced that in class. The buddy system was a way to ensure safety when scuba diving, and that meant doing everything in pairs. But we're a group of three, how will that work? Oh, uh, anyways. You set up your dive plan together and stay together in the water. You also performed a buddy check before diving. This meant checking all of your buddies' equipment and having them check yours. Uh, BCD okay, uh, weights okay. The sea was not hospitable to human life. And a single mistake could lead to a fatal accident. The buddy system was there to reduce that possibility as much as possible. <sighs> While Emma and I did our buddy check, Chisa was clearly bored. Chisa used to scuba dive once upon a time. The only reason I had a C card was because I used to dive with her. Hmm. <laughs> Emily, uh, you okay? Your face is all red. Could she be feeling sick? Uh, I mean, you're looking all over my body. She kept moving her hips like she was trying to dodge my eyes. But that's not why I'm doing it. I'm checking to make sure you're safe and nothing breaks. 
I replied quickly without a moment's hesitation. Maybe you're being just a little too careful, hmm? This is her first dive with her safeguard. Of course I'm being careful. Although I denied the accusation, I had been admiring the... Of course you have. The curve of Emily's waist and the way her breast filled the tight wetsuit. Great. Since the wetsuit fits so tightly, it really showed off her figure. If I were to describe Emily, I'd say the parts that stuck out really stuck out and the parts that pulled in really pulled in. Great. Okay, let's switch. Now it's your turn, Emily. Okay. Emily checked my equipment. Checking for bent tubes, making sure the weight belt was fastened, that the air was flowing. Hmm. She looked nearly twice as long as I did, but her face was serious as she checked. Everything's okay. Okay, we're all set. Now it was time to dive. Do you know how to do a beach entry? We practice in class, but... There are a variety of techniques for entering the water. Beach entry, rock surface entry, boat entry, and so on. They all had specialized techniques used for entry. Let's see, first you face your body without your fins on. Hold our fins in our hands, and we and I faced one another. This kind of makes my heart pound. Yeah, you're probably just nervous about diving. Happens to the best of us. Next, hold your partner's shoulders. We put our hands on each other's shoulders. And now holding this position, we walk sideways. Facing each other, our hands on each other's shoulders, we sidestepped into the water. This entry method was used on the beach because the soft sand could cause you to sink and lose balance. Fair enough. There weren't any waves here, but at other beaches, the incoming waves were a real threat. Not to mention all the heavy equipment we wore. Once we reached deep waters, we helped one another get our fins on. And there we go. I got it. Yeah. Emily kicked her legs in the water to make sure the fins wouldn't come off easily. Okay, time to go under. Right. Wait. Just wait a minute. What's wrong? Let me breathe for a minute. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, I'm ready. Try not to worry so much, but if you get scared, just give me a sign. Roger. Alright, it's time to get ready. Go! When we put our faces underwater, at first we saw only clouds of tiny bubbles racing to the surface. When they cleared, the world was suddenly cast in a deep blue. I looked to one side. I couldn't see her expression through her mask, but her movements were stiff from nervousness. Relax, just relax. I touched her shoulder to comfort her. Right, relax. I poured it forward and down. Let's go. Okay. Slowly, we went deeper and deeper into the water. It was hard to simply dive down for beginners, as human bodies tend to float in water. So we moved toward the inlet's entrance, swimming just under the surface. As we moved away from the sandy floor of the inlet and over a steep cliff, the ocean floor was spread out before our eyes. As we moved further out into the open ocean, Emily's nervousness only intensified. I took her hand and we swam out further. Not long after, it slowly came into view. The ghost ship. Oh, you have the ghost ship. <gasps> Emily, wait. Don't rush. I stopped Emily as she had subconsciously started speeding up, then tapped my ear. And then she seemed to remember something important. She stopped moving and pinched her nose through her mask. She was equalizing her ears. There are several areas where air can get trapped in the human body. 
The ears are two of them, and as you dive deeper and the outside pressure increases, those air pockets are squeezed. If you go too fast, it can cause pain or even rupture the eardrums. Equalizing is used to prevent that from happening. One technique is to hold your nose and breathe out. This pushes the air to your ears. By increasing the amount of air in those spaces, you can equalize the pressure inside with the outside pressure. Equalizing the ears is an important skill for scuba, and if you can't do it, then you can't dive deep. <sighs> Emily? Wait, I'll, I'll do it. Just don't go without me. I know, just settle down and take it slow. <sighs> Got it. Emily gave me the okay sign. I equalized my ears too before we continued on. You have to equalize every so often the deeper you dive, but the frequency is different for everyone. And if your buddy is having trouble equalizing, it's important to stop moving and wait for them. Speaking of air pressure, the lungs are also pretty big bags of air. As the outside pressure increases, they get smaller, but breathing helps regulate the pressure naturally. All you have to do is fill your lungs with air from the cylinder. This also means that you can't hold your breath whilst when scuba diving. As we went deeper and Emily continued equalizing, she seemed to calm down. Look, it's the ghost ship. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. It was caught in a rocky crevice on the sea floor. I'd heard the rumors tons of times about the ghost ship that wandered the sea floor. It was the kind of story kids lived for. But I'd never seen it myself. <laughs> but finally, here we were. And we gazed at the silent ship lying there, her heart heavy with a range of emotions. This mysterious ghost ship had wandered the waters of Okusawara Islands for 16 long years. Suddenly, a mammalian figure jumped into view. A dolphin, and... See you there? Chisa swam by. <sighs> Don't sneak up on me like that. I nearly had a heart attack. And we complained, air bubbling around her. Chisa dove effortlessly, her movement unhindered by mask or tank. That girl must have gills somewhere. Agreed. Schools of fish had gathered around the ghost ship. Shipwrecks provided large habitats for fish, so they were excellent diving spots. It's beautiful. Emily stared at the magical scene, our goal completely forgotten. Chisa easily passed us, passed by us to approach the fish-surrounded ship, but suddenly drew back. What's wrong? Hmm. Chisa looked in my direction and drew up a sign by making an X with her hands. Don't come this way. I wasn't sure what had happened, but our original plan had only been to come this far anyway. I gave Chisa an okay sign and led Emily back to the shallows. What's that, Emily? I can't go any further. Back on the beach, Emily laid out on the beach in her equipment. Come on now, your critter will get all sandy. Get it all off first, then collapse. But it's so heavy. We'd come back after our little dive, but carrying all that gear from the shallows up to the beach was no small task. It was hard enough for me, but for Emily, who looked like she never lifted anything heavier than a pasta fork, it must have been torture. Here, I'll help. Thank you, Harold. And here comes the knight in shining armor. It's the buddy system. Sure, whatever you say. As I helped Emily out of her gear, I called over to Chisa. So what was up over by the ghost ship? Chisa had gone over alone, but told us not to come closer via hand signal. Oh, uh, I ran- Oh, ran into a really nasty current. A current? Yeah, this place always had weird currents, but since the ghost ship arrived, it's even worse. There's a rip current now. Seriously? What's a rip current? 
Emily asked, finally free of her cylinder and other equipment. There are unstable currents in the ocean, just like air currents on land, and they can change direction with depth. Yeah, we learned that in class. You have to be careful of all that, but there are also particularly strong currents near the sea floor. Rocks or coral reefs can squeeze currents and make them really intense. These currents are called rip currents. If you get caught in one, it can carry you along with it. Hmm. It didn't look like Emily was getting it. She's probably thinking it would be easy to swim back since you were still in the water. If a rip current heads toward land, you might be okay. But if you get caught in a rip current that heads to the open sea, guess what happens? Uh, you might get swept really far away. Emily looked pale as she finally understood the danger. Exactly. Right, Jisa? Hmm. That was pretty dangerous then. If Chisa had informed us, we might have gotten caught. That's why I said you need to get experience and gather knowledge, so you can avoid the dangers. You should heed my advice, you know. I am the daughter of a scuba shop owner. Chisa said somewhat rashly before going off to sit alone in the ship. What's her problem? Uh, I don't know. Oh, that's pretty. Today I went for my very first dive after receiving my sea card. It was... I was invincible in the water. We were sitting in Machiko's cafe before it opened, and Emily was writing feverishly about the day's dive in her new logbook. Don't put lies in your logbook. What do you mean by invincible? You were like a baby, taking your first steps. Quiet, you. It's fine. I'm going to hand this book down to my children and grandchildren as a record of my glory. A logbook is used to keep track of your dives. They are useful for keeping track of which sea, what depth, and how long you dived. There are sections for other details, such as weather conditions, who else was there, and even a space to write, just like a diary. Some people even make sketches of the fish they saw during their dive. Not only are they fun to fill out, logbooks are also useful when trying for more advanced certification or renting equipment. It's physical proof of your experience in the water, which is why writing about one's perceived invincibility wasn't such a good idea. I see you're also keeping a logbook? Chisa glanced at my log. Huh? What? Emily saw my sketch of the ghost ship and sulked. Hey, I was going to draw that. Who's stopping you? This isn't like civilization where you can only have one of each wonder. You can draw the thing if you want. Never mind. Uh, now I don't want to. Either she didn't want to be second, or she didn't think she had the artistic skill. With a pained look on her face, she went right back to writing. Afterwards, Chisa compared our logbooks. We won't be able to get near the ghost ship until Emily gets a bit better at diving. We also have to come up with a more detailed dive plan. The lost engagement ring that Emily was looking for was in that ghost ship. We had to get inside somehow, but entering a sunken ship required a bit of skill. These wrecking lessons were offered, but only in advanced scuba classes, meaning we need to take classes, too. And we can't even keep neutral buoyancy yet. Neutral buoyancy refers to the technique of floating in place in the water, and is more difficult than it sounds. You have to control your body's buoyancy to keep from sinking or floating up. The technique would be a necessity for wrecking. And anyway, to put together a good plan, we need to observe the ghost ship more. An underwater camera would really help. If only my bag was it somewhere at the bottom of the ocean, I had enough money for something like that. Even though Emily was working at the cafe, all her money went to renting diving equipment. And even the discounted price at Chisa's shop didn't do much to offset the costs of daily rentals. Well, luckily for us, I got my hands on this. Huh? 
What is that, a camera? I remembered that Grandpa used to take pictures underwater. It had turned up when I searched the shed. I know, I mean, that camera looks pretty old. Does it still work? Well, I made sure the shutter still works. The main problem is that it's not digital. It's not digital? What does that mean? That means it's a film camera. Emily stared at the camera. A film camera? Wow, are old cameras always this big too? I'm not too sure, but apparently this one is especially big. Guess it has something to do with it being an underwater camera? Since it was designed to be waterproof under high pressure, it probably had to be pretty big. I put a small yellow box on the tape. Here's the film I found with the camera. Uh, it's past the use-by date, but I think it's still okay. And what's this part for? Jeez, I noticed another camera accessory. I'm not really sure, but I think you can still take pictures without it. These days, you could look up anything online. I'd already studied info on how to use the camera, what to watch out for when using film, and so on. We can use this to take pictures of the exterior. Taking pictures of a ghost ship with an old-fashioned camera sounds cool. I'm getting excited. Yeah, it'll feel even more like an adventure. Of a lifetime. But I have to ask again, does it still work? Not a clue. We should probably try it out first. When? Tomorrow. I'd love to say yes, but finances are saying it's a new. Right, I took those classes on credit, but if I use all my wages now, I won't be able to pay it back. Well, summer break isn't over yet, so we still have time. And speaking of summer break... Hey guys! Roto, welcome, what's up? It was still a bit too early for him to be eating dinner. Uh, could you hang this up for me? Rita pulled a flyer from the bundle in his hand. When I saw what was on it, I couldn't help blurting out. Oh, it's happening again this year! Um, a uh, fireworks show. The flyer had a picture of fireworks on it. The summer festival. We do it the night of the Bond Festival. Bond Festival. This festival's dance aims to help remember the dead. Men and women of all ages gather on the temple grounds to dance on the evening of August 16th. They say those souls who have escaped the torments of hell are so happy that they dance at the Ogasawara Bond Festival. All the residents are already so close. It can be a very lively event, and there are even encores from time to time. The Ogoswaran Bond Festival was famous, but on that same day they also held a big fireworks show. That was the Summer Festival. You can watch from Amara Beach. Really? Oh, I want to see. You guys should uh, help out too. I'm lending you my canoe after all. We can help with the festival? Yep, there's a group that sets up for the Bond Festival. She's just helping out too, look. He flipped the fly around to reveal what was on the back. Uh, it's Chisa. So that seems to be some sort of like itinerary or schedule or something. There's like a probably a promotional quote from Chisa. Okay. It is. <laughs> Chisa's picture was fi featured on one side. It says the dolphin girl is waiting for you. Okay, that's enough. Show's over. Actually, it technically hasn't even started yet. So, is this your modeling debut, Chisa? Good for you, Chisa. Chisa's the pride of the island. She's like a celebrity. Seriously, cut it out. Ugh, this is why I told them I didn't want to do it. I can't believe Mom still sent the picture. She used her body to hide the flyer on the table. It was weird to see her so upset. She must have been really embarrassed. So, what about you guys? Yes, I would help. Uh, sure, no objections here. Right then, it's settled. Oh, but I don't want to be a model like Chisa. I think you'd make a great model. But we already made the flyers, so, you know. Anyway, 
that's all that's left to do is to pass a match. Right. Hey, hold up, Emily. Where are you going? It's time to open. And she's gone. <laughs> Must be nice. Chisa sounded envious. She is naive. In a good way. And other people just like seeing her happy. Psh, I just can't stand the way she manipulates people. Still, it seems like you're having fun. Yeah, I mean, maybe a little. She's uh, pursed her lips in discontent and looked at the freshly printed flyers. I'm so glad it's on the back. If it was on the front, I'd have to walk around ripping them down. As I watched her, I contemplated on whether I should ask. It seemed like what Chisa just said might be part of the reason she didn't want to do scuba anymore. Um, ask her about it, don't say anything. Alright, this is a question of, are we... Is it smarter to kind of delve in and show that's like, Hey, I care about how you feel about these things. Or, hey, I recognize you need your space. I feel that this is the sort of thing that you might want to vent about with someone, so we'll ask her about it. Hey, Chisa. Hmm? Uh, next time, why not come diving with us? What do you mean? I have been diving. I have been diving with you. No, I mean scuba diving. We can be buddies, just like old times. Chisa looked hesitant. But then Emily won't have a buddy. If you try telling her not to dive, she'll go off. True. But I'll go diving with you again. It's been too long. Yeah, maybe one day. She was dodging me, and there wasn't much else I could do. Due to current circumstances, I needed to dive with Emily. And that was fun and all, but I had to come to Ogaswara to go back to that special place with Chisa. But when I tried to bring it up, she ignored me completely. Maybe she was embarrassed, or maybe I was missing something. What is it? It's nothing. She just shook her head and muttered, weirdo, under her breath. Alright, it's time to open the shop. She just stood up and put on her apron. The cafe would be opening in 15 minutes. Can I hang this flyer up over here? Uh, sure, go ahead. Jeez, this is ridiculous. Why do they have to call me Dolphin Girl? I'll have to put it up so that there's no way to see the other side. Chisa muttered as she hung the flyer up on the shop bulletin board. Even though Chisa complained, she never refused a favor. That's why people relied on her so much. Anyway, I can't wait for the summer festival. Yeah, yeah, and the Bond Festival too. We stood there looking over the flyer as we talked about the old days. It made us even more excited for the future. <laughs>